Вега, друштвото за сметководствени и косалтик услуги, составено од долгогодишен професионален тим, им нуди на своите клиенти брза, професионална, ефикасна и квалитетна услуга. Достапни 24 часа во денот, 7 дена во неделата, Вега секогаш ја дава истата квалитетна услуга во поглед на сметководствената евиденција, анализа, даночна евиденција и даночен косалтик. Планирање и проекции, изготвување на бизнис план и инвестициона програма. Следење на сите програми за грантови, субвенции и финансирани проекти. Вега секогаш на ваша услуга. Hi everyone and thanks for watching the channel North Asnom. Today we have a special guest right from California, uh, Scott Bennett. Scott, thanks for coming to our channel. I'm very happy that I've got you here, that finally I, I'm speaking to you after reading a whole lot about you. How are you? I'm well, Sasha, and it's very honorable for me to be with you and be with your beautiful audience. I look forward to Thank our conversation. I greatly appreciate that. Scott, can you tell us about yourself to our audience, your uh, experience uh, and the turmoil that you've gone through? Mm -hmm. Well, I uh, was a Bush administration official, George W. Bush uh, president in 2003 to 2008. Uh, and after that, I went into the United States Army as an officer in psychological warfare, counterterrorism, where I worked at the State Department, uh, Special Operations Command, Central Command. I also worked at Booz Allen Hamilton, a defense contractor with Ed Snowden. Edward Snowden, of course, was later known for revealing much of the National Security Agency's secret tapping of uh, communication channels of other countries, as well as Americans. And uh, uh, what what the most interesting thing that happened to me was during my time in the military uh, 10 years ago, we had a lot more patriots and a lot more critical thinking individuals. And I started to discover that the Obama administration with Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and Eric Holder were all part of this secret Swiss bank. Uh, financing of, of terrorism in the Middle East using secret Swiss bank accounts. And I wrote a report on it, uh, expecting that, it, that the Congress would investigate it. And instead, they uh, created charges saying I filled out a housing form improperly. Like if you went to a hotel and oh. filled out a hotel uh, sheet, they said you filled this out improperly. That's a false statement on a government form. Therefore, it's a crime with five years in prison. And I, I thought it was a test because I was I, I had a high security clearance. I was an officer. I had a Ph.D. in political theory. I was at the top echelons. And uh, the next thing I know, uh, they had thrown me in jail uh, for filling out a housing form improperly. But the real reason was because I exposed the terrorist financing secret Swiss bank accounts that Hillary Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, Eric Holder, Lanny Brewer, Joe Biden were all using to overthrow Libya, Syria, uh, Ukraine, uh, many of the Ar Arab Spring operations. And uh, funny enough, the White Hats, who worked with me in the military and in the intelligence areas, knew that I was being set up because I, I had a personality of a Scotsman. I, I ran and attacked and swung my sword and screamed and uh, fought like a warrior. And I didn't back down. And they knew that I was being shut up because I, they couldn't afford to have my report out. So I had White Hat secretly guide me to the same, instead of sending me to California for a prison, they sent me to a different prison where a Swiss bank whistleblower was named wow. Brad Birkenfeld. And this was the same uh, pr the same Swiss bank American whistleblower that Ed Snowden had been tracking at, at CIA when he was working in Switzerland. So it was a divine orchestration to put me into the prison where I was able to acquire the bank account numbers and the bank account holders from the very person that I had been targeting uh, while I was in the U.S. military at Central Command. And uh, uh, Ed Snowden uh, saw that 
uh, I had filed a report called Shell Game, saw that Brad Birkenfeld was uh, also in prison. He knew it would lead to him because he was in, in the CIA and he would either be killed or, or silenced or imprisoned. And it was shortly after that, Ed Snowden left the country. So it, it's sort of a, a, a wild tale, but, you know, people can read it. I, I put it in the book, uh, Shell Game, uh, and it's a, it's a very comprehensive, long read, but it has all the documentation that establishes everything that we're discussing. And people can go to the website, shellgamewhistleblower.com, and you can read all about it. And I know you have that up there too, Sasha. So that's Absolutely. sort of a short version of uh, my background. Absolutely, and that's so, so fascinating. And on a Memorial Day, on a Memorial Day, you did file a report. And uh, what's happened to the report then? The report was uh, uh, terrifying to the Congress as well as to the military, as well as to the intelligence agencies, because it showed uh, how many congressmen and senators were being paid, were being uh, on the take, were getting secret money. And these secret bank accounts were hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, they, they buried the, the whistleblower that originally brought this over in 2008, 2009, because they, would, they were afraid that the revelations of Swiss banks being used by the American government in terrorist financing in Syria and yet Libya and elsewhere, funding ISIS, fi funding al-Nusra, funding al-Qaeda uh, to destabilize regimes like Bashar Assad, uh, uh, the Saudis, uh, Yanukovych, uh, the same bad guys that they had even planted in Bosnia uh, in the 1990s. Uh, this has all been part of an American proxy war using pawns in the form of Islamic terrorists to advance the American agenda to break up other nations and take their resources like they tried to do to Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union like they did to gobble up Eastern Europe into NATO, like they tried to do to Ukraine, they've tried to do elsewhere. The U.S. always uses uh, Islamic extremism as a pawn to destabilize nations. And this is the money flow. So they buried the report, and uh, eventually uh, Donald Trump, uh, I sent it to Donald Trump, and, and uh, some of his people had communicated with me. And ironically, the material I had on Union Bank of Switzerland uh, was also uh, part of the uh, the organizations that engineered the coup d'etat against President Trump. Specifically, Union Bank of Switzerland uh, had entered into an agreement with the Chinese Communist Party to purchase Dominion voting machines, ESNS, and Premier voting machines. Those same voting machines that later have been highly suspected, if not proven absolutely, to have corrupted the 2020 election. So I was sent back to Washington as part of Trump's analytical team, where I presented the Union Bank of Switzerland connection to the Chinese Communist Party and how this had played a role in the election fraud. And uh, that is now coming out in Donald Trump's uh, cases, where he is being charged with the Justice Department. So, Sasho, I, I classify it very simply, America is in a civil war, a revolutionary war, a quiet war, a, a very secret war, but a war where patriots like myself have been uh, rising up against this police state, which incidentally has been launching wars against the Middle East and Russia and Eastern Europe uh, for the past 20 years. And that's not what Americans want, although they're very ignorant of this. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a communist police state oppression of, of information and news in America. Americans have no clue what's been going on uh, in, for the last 30 years, especially against uh, you know, Russia, Bosnia, Sarajevo, Herzegovina, uh, 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 Kiev. Yanukovych uh, in 2014, they have no clue of these things, but it's all the American deep state. So we're, we're fighting a civil war in this country and information is the weaponry. Absolutely. And uh, that part of the media, main, main media stream, that there is a certain narrative that is uh, being projected onto first 
North America, I was in Canada for such a long time and I was exposed to that media narrative and I'm very familiar with that. But also what I see when I, uh, uh, being here in Macedonia, uh, what I see is just this promulgated towards Eastern Europe. So the local yeah. medias uh, are, are, are spreading it throughout the, this society as well. So mm -hmm. there is an echo for such a a media narrative there that is being reflected here so and you're really tying it really nicely uh, in, in that regard when it comes to the justice system uh, Donald Trump has said many times that it has been weaponized by the Biden administration can you tell uh, he has four uh, uh, suits against him uh, yeah. what is your experience with that it is it is one of the most embarrassing, insulting, and outrageous uh, phenomenons that have has occurred in this country ever since its founding has been the last uh, four years of weaponization of the American government, specifically the Department of Justice and the courts. It is a terrible, disgusting insult to me as an American to witness this police state, this communist, and it's even worse than communist in a sense because America is, the, the liberal Democrat leftists are turning into woke fascists which promote LGBT, homosexuality, lesbian, transgender, castration of children, worshiping of the environment, eating bugs, just a, a horrible ideology of madness behind this Democrat leftist uh, modern uh, psychosis masquerading as a political ideology. And this psychosis, political ideology, has absorbed into the political agendas and directives of the Justice Department, of Homeland Security, of CIA, of uh, a variety of instruments in the government. And the fruit of that is uh, inventing charges. And I was sort of the canary in the coal mine. Never before had an officer and any military person been charged for filling out a military housing form while in the military using the Department of Justice. It's like the Department of Justice charging a soldier for murder when they are ordered to shoot the enemy. That's, that's the equivalent of what they did to me. It is ridiculous, it should never have happened, but the fact that they allowed it showed me there, and it gave me a glimpse, God gave me sort of a glimpse of, this is the future. There is no truth, there is no freedom, there is no justice or righteousness in America in its government. It has become a cannibalistic demoniac monster. And th that showed me what we see now, and that is they've, they've, uh, they're trying to weaponize uh, cases against Donald Trump using prosecutors that have been bought and paid for by George Soros and other globalists, and they are uh, trying to uh, remove Trump from any political campaigning because he represents the, uh, the, the real president, he won the election. Uh, they stole it. They lied. They committed fraud. And they're trying to bury that, cover it up. But he won the election. The American people know it. A large group of Americans went to Capitol Hill to voice their disapproval on January 6th. And that was commandeered by Ukrainian mercenaries that uh, the left had brought in the, the Obama administration had bought it, brought in, that the CIA had, had uh, under their payroll. Ukrainian mercenaries were brought to Capitol Hill wearing orange hats. The AFL-CIO, a uh, uh, union in America that ran the Postal uh, Union and others, they had conspired a plan to overthrow uh, the election. And I had the top secret documents from these organizations that I delivered when I was back in Washington. And I was part of General Flynn, Sidney Powell, Patrick Byrne, uh, Joe Flynn, uh, uh, Rudy Giuliani, uh, and with a variety of other military 
uh, intelligence people, we were all part of this team that was trying to help President Trump uh, not steal the election or commit insurrection, but reveal that he actually won and they were trying to steal it. So I was part of that team and I had revealed the AFL, CIO and other parties are going to commit major domestic uh, 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 upheaval to try and create chaos. And that is exactly what they did on January 6th by pretending that Trump supporters were breaking windows and causing havoc in the Capitol. And they were not. That was all a fraud designed to psychologically traumatize the American people and weaponize the government against Trump-supporting conservative Republicans, like the Nazi Gestapo forces uh, in Germany in 1933, if you will. And you see that with the FBI and Homeland Security targeting and arresting, uh, uh, you know, people who object to their agenda. Uh, they've, they've, I've, I've been with a lot of filmmakers, and they have made films about women who are arrested because they go to PTA meetings and challenge the the gay agenda that's trying to advance in America. I mean, it 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 becomes a horror story. So that's a a short nutshell that the Department of Justice and the FBI and Homeland Security have been weaponized to charge and throw people in prison who stand up against them. The other thing they've done, Sasha, is manipulate and uh, control the, the social media platforms. And it has just come out recently that Homeland Security and the Department of Justice and FBI all conspired with Facebook, Twitter, uh, uh, YouTube, Google to con to manipulate and control and delete conservative talking points, conservative narratives that were challenging the election, that were challenging the COVID-19 phenomenon, that were challenging the vaccine, that were showing the vaccine of COVID-19 was causing deaths and injury and was a scam. Uh, the Department of Justice under the Biden administration tried to bury all of that uh, by controlling social media. That's another illustration of the American government becoming a complete tyrannical uh, uh, communist state, if you will, where they're trying to uh, uh, control people. And they've done worse. They've committed treason in the Biden administration by opening up the southern border and bringing in every third world person who can walk across the border and putting them into parts of America to try and displace uh, the vote. The same thing that they did when they overthrew Libya, all of the African and the Middle East people have flooded up into Europe and they are, have caused nothing but chaos and suffering in Europe. And the same thing will happen in America, which... I consider uh, an act of treason. And again, it's another reason why I, I see a, a revolution in this country brewing that we haven't seen since 1776. And it's probably going to get uh, very violent when the dollar collapses. And that's the other thing. The American government has weaponized the dollar and tried to put sanctions on Russia and sanctions on other countries. And what has resulted? These other countries have left America, left the dollar, and they formed the BRICS organization, the BRICS uh, payment system. That is only going to multiply. Uh, and, and you see that in all these nations that are defecting from the orbit of the United States and its control, as well as away from colonialism, away from France and Britain and Germany and America. They're all going to Russia or BRICS or China or they're they're seeking a different collaboration, a different uh, a political association. And we see this, you know, every day, the United Nations failing in Gaza, for example. So I think there's a tremendous shift in the world's polarity and the new world order, the new uh, horizon to me as an analyst indicates Brazil, Russia, China, South Africa, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, uh, uh, Egypt. India, e Egypt, this whole uh, portion of the world is going to flourish 
while the United States, Canada, Australia, Britain, Germany, and France is going to decay unless they have some major revolutions to vomit out from their political body these ideologies, these narratives, these false religious idolatrous beliefs of narcissism and hedonism and paganism and homosexuality and transgenderism, every vile and contemptible and disgusting uh, a rejection of God and family has become the religion of the, the new West. And until that is vomited out in a Nineveh moment of repentance, God will not resurrect the West or the countries. And if they can't repent, they are destined to become Sodom and Gomorrah, quite literally. It seems to me that the troubles that are being created in the United States are spread out throughout the world. And there is a deep division that is becoming more and more. Uh, going back to the, uh, the divisions that are such a polarizing in, in, the, in the United States and it's so visible, are there any faith in the electoral process in the United States for the upcoming presidential election after we know what happened during the 2020 presidential elections? No, I don't think so. I think this is catching on despite the mainstream media's uh, perversion and, and uh, trying to control people's narratives. I think in their hearts, the majority of the American people know that the elections are completely unreliable <clears throat> unless it's with a paper ballot that you stamp with your thumbprint and that goes into the machine and people count. Unless there's a verifiable ballot that can be counted by truthful, honest people, uh, the, there's too much uh, danger of it being manipulated electronically. And you see the Democrats trying to engineer the elections where they don't allow paper ballots, nor do they allow uh, counting. Uh, so that's, you see their handwriting on the wall, like Stalin said, it matters who counts the votes. And the Democrats are all communist, Stalinist tyrants anyway. There's nothing good in their, in their ideology. Uh, so I don't think there's much faith at all. And I, I predict this, Sasha, I've said it before, and I shared it with Bronco. Um, I predict that Joe Biden is going to be replaced. And I believe he's going to be replaced, not by Kamala Harris, because she is not a natural born citizen. So technically, she cannot be president. She was born in America, but her parents were uh, Canadian and East Indian, I believe. So she is disqualified from being the president because she's not natural born. That means, uh, I believe, uh, Gavin Newsom, the current maniac governor of California, that has passed legislation to castrate children who want to be castrated because they're mentally confused. The same Gavin Newsom who shut down California and forced every American to wear a mask and get the vaccine or else they would be fired from their jobs. The same Gavin Newsom that gave $800 uh, billion, I believe, to the Chinese for masks. Uh, the same Gavin Newsom that just went back over to China a week or two ago and I believe he shared with the Chinese his agenda, which was he will replace Kamala Harris, and Kamala Harris will either be put into Dianne Feinstein's position, uh, or she will be assassinated, and, and Gavin Newsom will be put in. And then I believe they will assassinate Joe Biden by either claiming it was done by a Trump supporter, or a Russian, or an Iranian, or someone like that to move Gavin Newsom into the presidency. They have to do it with a political martyrdom because that generates the political outrage and the sense of guilt, and it gives a certain license for tyrannical police state lockdowns like we've seen when they have mass shootings, the police in Boston or elsewhere claims to have the authority to lock everyone in their homes. I think that uh, same uh, license of uh, tyrannical martial law is going to be exercised, or they think it's going to be exercised, when they assassinate Joe Biden and uh, then move Gavin Newsom into the presidency. I predicted that for a long time, and others have as well, knowing that Newsom is the, the best candidate. He's young, he's a male, he's, he's uh, also 
uh, bisexual, uh, and I think they are going to insert him in. That's their agenda, and that uh, would would uh, precipitate, I think, a, a major clash in civil war in America. And I think they're trying to do that to initiate a larger war abroad. The reason that America is trying to pick a war with Russia and uh, uh, China and Iran is, I believe, they, they think they can control those conflicts. They think that they can have a pretend war with Russia, China, and Iran uh, in order to weaponize the American uh, military against the American citizens. And what they may be doing, too, is bringing in young military-aged foreign men from Mexico, Honduras, Haiti, south of the border, in order to give them citizenship if they join the military and then turn these foreigners who have no loyalty to America, no loyalty to the culture, these foreign-born Hispanic migrant young men, they will put them in the military and then turn them against the American citizens like they did the Japanese in 1942 when that's... they rounded up Japanese and put them in concentration camps. So I predict that's part of the Democrat plan, but I don't believe they'll be successful at all. Uh, the American people have enough patriots and veterans that would rise up uh, and, and engage in another revolutionary war, uh, hopefully. Uh, but, you know, God knows what, what will be occurring. The, the country may also be completely dissolved because of the wickedness and idolatry that America has been sowing by destroying nations, using 9-11 as an excuse. Seven countries in five years, they've destroyed Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Libya, uh, Syria, uh, look at Ukraine. Uh, all of these acts, I think, are coming back uh, upon the United States in a form of divine judgment. Would you predict what would happen, happen to, to Trump? Trump? I think it's going to have. I think they're going to try and try and do this. I hope. I hope not. I hope it doesn't work, and I pray against it. But I predict that they are, and I've said this from the beginning. When they launch a criminal prosecution of someone, the judge has discretion to imprison that person. And the judge has put a gag order on Trump. And I said they were going to do that. I said they will put a gag order on Trump, which means you can't say or do or communicate anything that we don't like. And they did. And now they're going to claim that he violated the gag order and they're going to imprison him. So I predict they're going to claim Donald Trump has violated the gag order. He is now put in prison. They may do it with the female in the Washington, D.C. case uh, because it's, it's harder for people to stand up against a female black judge, they think. But they will gag Trump, put him in jail, and I believe they will try and assassinate him, make him fall no. down chair, fall, fall down stairs, give him a shot poison him who knows and uh although i hope not and i pray against it i see them doing that because the democrats have no morality whatsoever they are consumed with the lust for power and a lust for power endlessly there will never be freedom in america again until these democrat fascist lust for power madmen are overthrown so I do predict they're going to try and uh, imprison Trump and kill him. If they kill him, if they succeed in killing him, even if he died naturally, I think you would see America uh, split and you would see Americans uh, rise up and be coming into power in their states and you would have another civil war. You would have states that say we have nothing to do with the federal government. We do not recognize the Biden administration. They have committed murder. They've committed treason. And we are separating ourselves. They have no jurisdiction or authority in our state or our county or our town. I predict that would, would, be, would be the result. And I think that's inevitable because um, even if they don't uh, kill Trump, uh, he is, he is, he is uh, the strongest candidate so far. Uh, but even that is is going to come into question because 
the, the bottom line is Americans are tired of these endless wars. The war in, the, in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, the war in Yemen, the war in Ukraine, the war in Libya, all of this for the last 20 years has been war and bloodshed. And they don't want another war against Iran, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, Yemen, with Russia and China backing uh, the Middle Eastern countries. They don't want a war against the Muslim world. And if Donald Trump tries to uh, be the champion of Israel, saying we'll go to war with the Muslim world, I think that'll destroy his chances because I don't think the Americans would would follow him in that regard. And that's that's the real question. Is he wise enough to recognize that uh, this current war that is erupted because of Netanyahu, it is entirely the result of Netanyahu and the Israeli Zionists that have been treating the Gaza and Palestinian people like a Gestapo prison camp for 20 20 years. And the rest of the world has sort of turned away and not paid attention. And this latest uh, eruption of of, uh, conflagration of fighting uh, and and the bombing and the killing of of, uh, the entire Gaza Strip, bombing them into oblivion, I think this is going to erupt the Muslim world like we've never seen before. It's already having consequences. The uh, the ambassadors and consulates of Israel are being kicked out of countries. Other countries are, are not recognizing them. That's only going to amplify. Turkey is probably probably going to get militarily involved. Syria, Hezbollah, Iraq are already involved. They're already bombing American bases that are there. So the Middle East and the Muslim Arabic peoples, and interestingly enough, too, the Shia and the Sunni are putting aside their ideological differences and focusing on a unified agenda, which is to shield and protect the innocent Palestinians who are being uh, killed and bombed and their, their, their whole cities destroyed. That's the new call to the Islamic Arabic world. And that's something the West does not want to fight. Europe certainly won't fight it. Europe is going to detach themselves and stay out of it entirely. So if Donald Trump gets on this bandwagon thinking that he can go ride on a white horse to Israel's defense, and I think he made a lot of stupid uh, mistakes in his foreign policy activity, uh, then he's 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 he may not be the president. And and quite honestly, I don't think the American public are 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 really have any faith in a president at all. What president since Ronald Reagan have Americans ever benefited from? Yes, you could say Donald Trump did some good things with trying to build a, a border wall and, and giving tax relief and not getting us into certain wars and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that, that was good. But then he was overthrown at the last minute. He also, I might add, and I'm, you know, I, I supported him, I voted for him. He also allowed the COVID-19 vaccine to run rampant through America. He allowed the shutting down of American businesses and churches. And and he had traitors in his administration. So he made a lot of bad mistakes that show very poor judgment. And uh, time will tell if people are forgiving of that, if they're going to give him a second chance um, or, or not. Well, I don't think they're going to vote for people like Nikki Haley. I don't think Americans want any war president they want a John F. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan type. And I don't think that's Robert Jr., Robert Kennedy Jr. either. I think he is uh, he's he's making a good play, but I, I don't even think he would would uh, succeed. So I, in a part of me doesn't believe the Americans have much faith in the presidential position at all because they haven't done anything but get us into fighting and conflict uh, for the past 30 years, but starting with. George Bush Sr., then Bill Clinton, then George Bush, and then Obama, and then George uh, uh, Trump came in and sort of adjusted the country a little bit, but then he failed to defend against the deep state bureaucracy, as President Putin warned, and uh, he was overthrown. And the last three, four years have been the ruin of America. This Joe Biden is a child molesting zombie, which many believe are, are is not even the real Joe Biden, but is a clone, a a uh, a false uh, actor with a mask, 
which I, I think there's very good evidence to indicate that. There's a lot of strange anomalies about his physical ears and things being different than what they were 20 years ago. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of strange things associated with this. But all of the policies of the last three or four years have destroyed the American dollar, destroyed America's relationship with Russia, destroyed America's relationship with Europe by blowing up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. America did that. Not the American people, the Biden administration, Zionist, neocon, uh, uh, people like Victoria Nuland and uh, uh, Blinken and uh, 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 Sullivan and and uh, Biden and all of these people associated with the the uh, uh, liberal Democrat neocon party, the Uniparty, like you said, that's all about American power projection by force. So we've we've entered a dark eclipse. We've entered a twilight moment. And the question is, uh, is this eclipse going to pass? And we're going to once again see the sunlight and America become what it was once again in 1776? Or is this eclipse going to be a permanent state of darkness and madness and violence that uh, turns America into the biblical abomination of desolation the the smoldering ruin of a sodom and gomorrah the 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 stench in the nostrils and a bad memory of what was once a great nation uh turned against god and family and natural law and totally crumbled and eroded and decayed uh un, under the 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 poison and death of its own sin uh, that's that's the question to ask. But again, righteous people need to continue to pray, and and I and pray for a Nineveh moment where where God will uh, resurrect this country. Amen. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Scott. This was very revealing, very uh, informative uh, on uh, your side. I greatly appreciate you being our guest on our No Fasting channel. I'm looking forward to host you uh, many more times with uh, your great analytical work that you have done and improved yourself with. And I appreciate being our guest. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Благодарам што наследете во ова одличен интервју на Скот Бенет, ексклузивно на нашиот канал Нов Асном. Се надевам вам вие уживавте во ова интервју со следното видување се најдобро.